Hi team, I hope you're all well. Today I'm going to be telling you about my 2021 pre-orders. Now I don't have a lot of pre-orders so far, I've got 10, so I'm just going to tell you about those. I did like a massive pre-order last night on Waterstones, they've currently got double points and also triple points if you spend over three, £100, sorry not £300, £100, which I'm mad about because um, I made like a 56 quid order last night, but a few days ago before this came out, it's like a Black Friday sale, um, before this came out I made an order of like 36 quid so a couple more books and I could have had my hundred pound thing but it was too late I'd already made that pre-order of the others so anyway I've got 10 books on pre-order all of these are from Waterstones except for the last one which is from Forbidden Planet so I am buying from not independent well yeah it's kind of independent stores stores that are outside of amazon i'm trying i am trying to do better um with this so hopefully 2021 will be the year that i kind of nail this we will see <laughs> anyway let's get into these i'm going to tell you the title of the book and who it's by i will show a picture of the cover here when it's coming out and then if I don't fully know the ins and outs of the book, I will just read the synopsis to you. So, the first book that I have pre-ordered is A Court of Silver Flames, which comes out on the 16th of February. I'll show a picture of the cover here, which is a disgusting and such a big mistake from the publishers. I am mad as hell about it because I have, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but right here, I have the hardbacks of the original covers and I want a hardback of this original cover. I am pre-ordering it, I'm going to take the dust jacket off and hope, hope to goodness that it is nice underneath and just keep the dust jacket off. Probably even bin the dust jacket at this point. Cause so, this one is following Nesta Archeron and also Cassian. If you don't know what the Akatar series is about, I mean, where have you been? But it's about Faye and it's about this young girl called Feyre who basically accidentally kills a Faye in the forest one day while she's hunting for food and she then gets taken to this other world, if you like, where she has to live with the Faye to kind of repent for her sins, if you like, and it just kind of shit goes down from there. Nesta is Feyre's sister and this is going to be her story. So I'm very excited for the book in general to get the contents inside of the book but not how the book looks unfortunately which is a shame i haven't been waiting for this series as long as many as most people have but uh still i'm mad about it the next one is a dark and hollow star which comes out on the 25th of february and this and this is by ashley shuttleworth now um maddie from book browsing blog i'll leave a link to her channel down below go check her out i've brought this to my attention this cover is beautiful i believe that this book is queer and i am living for it okay so let me read you the synopsis of this the cruel prince meets city of bones yes please in this thrilling urban fantasy set in the magical underworld of toronto oh, okay nice uh, where four queer teens race to stop a serial killer before their crimes expose the hidden world of fairies to humans. This sounds fantastic. Choose your player. The half fey outcast desperate for acceptance. The tempestuous fury exiled and hellbent on re revenge. The dutiful prince determined to earn his place. The brooding guardian bur burdened by a terrible secret. Each holds a key to solving a series of ri ritualistic murders that threatens to expose fairies to the human world. But they cannot do it alone. To track down the killer, they will have to form a tenuous alliance, putting their differences and conflicts aside. Failure risks the destruction of their fa the fairy and human world alike. And time is running out. Time to roll the dice. I am living for this. This sounds incredible. I am so excited. Yes, please. 25th of February for that one. Then I'm excited for Act Your Age, Evie Brown by Talia Hibbert. This comes out on the 9th of March. I don't know why I was delayed in that then. 9th of March. I am so here for this. This one is the third in the Brown Sisters series. So I am excited to finally get to Eve Brown. I loved Get Alive Chloe Brown and completely fell in love with both Danny and Zaf in Take a Hint Danny Brown. This one is queer um, and I'm so living for this book. I'm so excited. Eve Brown is a certified hot mess, sounds like me. No matter how hard she strives to do the right thing, her life always goes horribly wrong. So she's given up trying. But when a personal brand of chaos ruins an expensive wedding, oh dear, someone has to liberate those poor doves. 
her parents draw the line. It's time for Eve to grow up and prove herself, e even though she's not entirely sure how. Jacob Wayne is in control, always. The bed and breakfast stone is on a mission to dominate the hospitality industry and he expects nothing less than perfection. So when a purple haired tornado of a woman turns up out of the blue to interview for his open chef position, he tells her the brutal truth, not a chance in hell. Then she hits him with her car, supposedly by accident. Yeah, right. Now his arm is broken, his B&B is understaffed and the dangerously unpredictable Eve is fluttering around trying to help. Before long, she's infiltrated his work, his kitchen and his spare bedroom. Jacob hates everything about it, or rather he should. Sunny Chaotic Eve is his natural born nemesis, but the longer these two enemies spend it in close quarters, the more their animosity turns to something else. I am so living for this. Enemies to Lovers is so exciting. Yes, please. I'm so hyped. So, um, if you were interested in knowing the tropes, a Get Alive Chloe Brown is basically Enemies to Lovers. Well, Enemies to Friends to Lovers. Take a hint, Danny Brown is fake dating, and by the sounds of things, um, Get Alive, no. Actor Age, Eve Brown is enemies to lovers as well. Uh, the next one that I've pre-ordered is The Cost of Knowing, which comes out on the 11th of March. This is by Brittany Morris. And I am really, really intrigued by this one. This is from the same author of Slay, which I have not read yet, but I do have a copy of. So I am looking forward to reading both of these books. And the covers of these are gorgeous as well. Aren't they beautiful? Um, this one is for fans of Dear Martin and they both die at the end. I ha again, haven't read either of those. I've got Dear Martin on my shelves, but I haven't got They Both Die at the End, but I've heard great things about that one. 16-year-old Alex Rufus lives with his younger brother, Isaiah, in a quiet neighbourhood in Chicago. But recently, the neighbours are on high alert whenever they see something they don't think looks safe. They take matters into their own hands, often calling the cops without reason. Alex starts taking on more shifts at the local ice cream shop, Scoops, and spending time with his girlfriend, Talia. But then Alex starts experiencing visions of the future whenever he touches objects or people around him. And when he picks up a family photo, he has a vision that his younger brother, Isaiah, is going to die and he can't tell how, but he knows it will be soon. All Alex wants to do is protect Isaiah, but how can he protect him in the present when he knows the dangers of the future? And how will he ensure Isaiah's pl place in it when the one place he felt protected, his neighbourhood, doesn't feel like home anymore? A story that speaks to the hard truths about race, prejudice and the inherent injustice that permeates the world we live in. This sounds fantastic. I am so here for this and I love the cover as well. I just think it's so beautiful. Um, the next book I've ordered is Shine Your Icy Crown by Amanda Lovelace. This comes out on the 1st of April. And this is the second in the You Are Your Own Fairy Tale series. The first is Break Your Glass Slipper. I love Amanda Lovelace's um, poetry collections. I think my favourite is The Princess Saves Herself in this one. But actually, to be fair, this could be my favourite over that one. I loved this so much. This is like Cinderella retelling but in poetry. So I'm really, really excited for Shine Your Icy Crown. I'm not sure which retelling this one is going to be but I'm really looking forward to it so if you're looking for some more poetry collections to add I would definitely check out Amanda Lovelace she's very very good indeed um then I've got Life's Too Short by Am uh, Abby Jimenez this is coming out on the 20th of April and this one is the third in this series which actually these books are semi independent from each other I read the happy ever after playlist first which was a mistake I should have read the friend zone first because the main character in this one which is Sloane is like a very very prominent side character in this book and her whole story starts in the friend zone so if you're going to read these i would read them in order the friend zone and the happy ever after playlist trigger warnings in the friend zone as far as uh, fertility is concerned trying to get pregnant um things like that so just be aware of that going in if that is a trigger for you but yeah this series basically the third one is called the third one is Life's Too Short. So I'm looking forward to this one because I've really enjoyed this series so far. This one is when Vanessa Price quits her job to pursue her dream of traveling the globe, she wasn't expecting to gain millions of YouTube followers who share her joy of season every moment. For her, living each day to its fullest isn't just a motto. Her mother and sister never saw the age of 30 and Vanessa doesn't want to wait to anything, want to take anything for granted. 
but after her half-sister suddenly leaves Vanessa in custody of her baby daughter, life goes from daily adventure to next level bad, now with bonus baby vomit in her hair. The last person Vanessa expects to show up after offering help is the hot lawyer next door, Adrian Copeland. After all, she barely knows him. No one warned her that he was the secret baby tamer, or that she'd be spending a whole lot of time with him and his geriatric chihuahua. Now she's feeling things she vowed she would not feel because the only thing worse than falling for Adrian is finding a little hope for a future she may never see. Sounds like this may have a um, underlying health issue in here so I would just beware of that going in. Possibly, I'm not sure, I'm speculating but it, it's a possibility um, from what I've read from that. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. I can't remember if I've heard of either of those characters from these two books so far. The characters tend to cross over, which is why they can be read independently, but I do recommend reading them in order. Um, but yeah, haven't, don't think I've heard of those characters. Can't remember. So, uh, but I'm looking forward to that one. Then I have pre-ordered Heartstopper 4 by Alice Oseman. This comes out on the 13th of May, and I cannot wait. If you don't know what Heartstopper is, it is a graphic novel, well, a comic series, basically that Alice has been making about these two boys, Charlie and Nick, who are basically um, finding their way in the world, essentially. And it's just beautiful, so adorable. I cannot wait to get Heartstopper 4. I love this series so much. So I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on that one. Then I have got Hanny and Issues Guide to Fake Dating, which comes out on the 27th of May. And this is by Adibo Jai Gerda. I think that's how you pronounce that, but I'm not sure. I saw Fake Dating and was like, yes, please. I am all over this. Um, but I think he's queer. So, Hani and Ishu couldn't be less alike, and they definitely don't like each other. But when fates collide and they pretend to date each other, things start to get messy. A heartwarming queer YA love story for fans of Becky Albertalli. I haven't read anything by Becky Albertalli, and in all honesty, I have no intention of doing so. Um, everyone likes Hani Khan. She's easygoing and one of the most popular girls at school but when she comes out to her friends as bisexual they don't believe her claiming she can't be bi if she's only dated guys panicked Hanny blurts out that she's in a relationship with a girl her friends can't stand issue day issue is the polar opposite of Hanny an academic overachiever she hopes that becoming head girl will set her on the right track for university her only problem becoming head girl is a popularity contest and issue is hardly popular pretending today at Hanny is the only way she'll stand a chance of being elected despite their mutually beneficial pact they start developing real friends real feelings for each other but some people will do anything to stop two Bengali girls from achieving happily ever after. This sounds so adorable. I am living for this. Um, I am very excited. If nobody, if you don't know, if you haven't been here long, fake dating is my favourite trope of all time. I will read anything that's got fake dating in it, to be perfectly honest. I am so excited about that one. Um, next book is Rise to the Sun, which comes out on the 6th of July. I've put 6th of the 7th, so I'm trying to work out what month that is. 6th of July, and this is by Leah Johnson, who is the author of You Should See Me in a Crown. I gave this 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. It was good. Really cute YA. Um, she writes like queer YA, so living for it. This one says, three days, two girls, one life-changing music festival. Tony's reeling in the wake of the loss of her roadie father and desperate to figure out where her life will go from here. So she's heading back to the festival that taught her to love music in the last ditch's effort to rediscover her passion. Olivia is a hopeless romantic whose heart has just taken a beating again and is beginning to believe that someone like her may never find the one. But the Farmland Music and Arts Festival is a chance to at least find a place where she fits. When the two collide, it feels like his met. But when something goes wrong and the festival is sent into panic, Tony and Olivia find they that they need each other and the music more than they ever imagined. It sounds really, really cute and I am living for this. I want to read more books that feature music in them, to be perfectly honest. I do have like another queer, um, I think it's YA book that features music like a music festival type thing that I really want to get to soon and that's This Is What It Feels Like by Rebecca Barrow. I've been meaning to get to this for a while now. This is an arc but it's not my arc. I actually swapped it with someone earlier this year I think it was. So I do want to get to this one as well but I do want to read more books that feature music in them in 2021 I think because I freaking love music so yeah I should do that. And the final book that I've ordered which is from Forbidden Planet and not Waterstones is Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff which comes out on the 7th of September. So this is obviously a vampire fantasy and it's obviously by a very very well-known 
author. I think, is this the only book that I've got on my TBR by a male author? I think it, not on my TBR, on my uh, pre-orders by a male author. I think it is, you know. Barely, so, yeah, all of my other, um, yeah, I think all of my books on my pre-orders are by women. Which is nice, actually, uh, apart from this one, which is by Jay Kristoff. So, this says, From holy cup comes holy light, the faithful hand sets world aright, and in the seven martyrs' sight, mere men shall end this endless night. Dramatic as ever, Jay. Um, 27 years have passed since the last sunrise, and for almost three decades, the creatures of the night have walked the day without fear. Once, once humanity fought bravely against the cold-blooded legions, but now we exist only in a few scattered settlements, tiny sparks of light in a growing sea of darkness. Gabriel de Leon is the last of the Silver Saints, a holy order dedicated to defending realm and church, now utterly destroyed. Imprisoned for the murder of the vampiric king, vampiric, how do you say that? Vampiric, vampire king, let's just call him a vampire king. Gabriel is charged with telling the story of his life. His tale spans years from his youth in the monastery of San Michon, Mikon? to the forbidden love that spelled his undoing and the betrayal that saw his order annihilated. Most importantly, Gabriel will tell the story of the Grail. The legendary cup prophesies to bring an end to the eternal night, whose location is known to a single person, a smart-mouthed teenage urchin named Dior. Their journey with a band of unlikely allies will would see Dior and Gabriel forage an unbreakable bond and set the broken paragon on a road of redemption. But now the grail is shattered and with the cup of the redeemer destroyed and the last silver saints awaiting execution, what can bring an end to this undying empire? I am so living for this. I'm so excited. I've been excited for this book now for about, it's definitely been over a year. It could be 18 months since I heard about it. It was meant to be coming out this year and then it got pushed back jay's finally finished it and now he won't bring the date forward um so yeah i'm very excited about that one as well so do let me know in the comments down below if you're excited about any of these also let me know in the comments down below what you have pre-ordered this for 2021 because i really really would like to support more authors and pre-order their books i don't regularly pre-order on the basis that i usually get my books from amazon and i'm trying to deter away from that but the amazon pre-orders are fucking shit so bad i have never had an amazon pre-order come on the day of release never so i usually if i am gonna get a book from amazon there was a lot of books that i wanted to pre-order but they're just not available on waterstones at the moment but if i am going to order a book off of uh, amazon that i want on the day of release i order it on the day of release <laughs> I just do it that way around and get it the next day or it might come there's if i order it early enough it might come 10 o'clock that night so but i'm trying to deter away from that and order from waterstones so where i can I'm trying to get my pre-orders from waterstones i know it helps support the authors so please let me know in the comments down below which of these you might be excited about what else you pre-ordered for 2021 so i can get some more ideas because apparently i have no chill and i hope you have enjoyed this video i shall see you in the next one Bye for now.